UK fine and she gon' rap it to the grave Man, I always support the real, so I'ma tune in every day Way up <laughs> You are now tuned in to Angela What I call her, yee yeah. It's a Friday Eve. It's Angela Yee. And look who's here. Jasmine Brand. I'm my own brand. Angela, good morning. Look at you. You look different. I feel like I haven't been here in so long. You haven't. Well, I don't think that's true. It's your favorite day, so here you are. I, I came back because it was my favorite day of the yes, week, Yes, it's Angela. a Thursday. Mm-hmm. A Friday Eve. Yes. Um, And look at Mano. I know Mano wants to be here. I know he has some things he wants to say to you. Oh, person. does he? Yes. Oh, okay. About you, you know. Not having been here in so long. Oh, gosh. All right, but uh, we do have a great show for you today. Mm -hmm. Uh, Little Zan is going to be joining us. Now, if you guys recall, he's did take a break. He was supposed to go on tour. Didn't We're going to find out everything oh, good. Okay. that happened with him because, you know, he was super lit and then now he is sober. He's clean. He's been sober, I think, for like a year and a half now. Wow, that's major. Yeah, that's a major thing. So we'll discuss everything that he's been going through. He's putting out new music. Okay. He's got a whole new team. So it'll be interesting to hear what his journey has been like because when he first came out, he was a teenager. He was a kid, I felt like. Yes, absolutely. And of course, today is a Thursday. So we always, every single day, no matter what day it is, we always focus on positivity. Of course. All right. So we're going to be positive about you being here, Jasmine. <laughs> oh, my God. I know. Everybody's going in on you. <laughs> every day. I feel judged. Mayno used to come in here and be like, no, Jasmine again. Oh my, okay. All right, Mayno. He also was telling people that you're pregnant. I was <laughs> like, no, she's not. What? Yeah. Mayno, it's crazy. I know. He was like, she's pregnant. I'm like, no, she's not. We just had drinks. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. But yesterday was his mother's um, birthday. She's okay. She passed away like a, a year and a half ago. So I know that's a tough day for him. So yeah. he was dealing with a lot of family things. Um, he's also been on the toilet a lot during the show. So really, we'll discuss that too. But okay. as usual, you guys get to start the show off. 800-292-5150 is a number. We're spreading some positivity. You're saying something great. I was just dealing with some calls this morning. Mm. I cannot wait to get through. You know how you're going through something and then you don't want to talk about it till you come through the other side. Yeah. I'm praying that today is a good day. Y'all pray for me. We got you. Y'all pray for me because we got some court activities Eesh. going down today. All right. With a... a Stuff. I don't want to call her a demon, but no, let's okay. <laughs> it's I won't. a little right. aggressive. 800 292 5150 is the number. Call us up. Let us know who you want to shine a light on. I just thought of somebody I don't want to shine a light on, but we want to start with some positivity. Dear God, please. <laughs> <laughs> Way up with Angela Yee. We're going light the block up. I'm a shine. I'm a shine. Turn your lights on, y'all. Turn your lights on. Spreading love to those who are doing greatness. Shine a light on them. Shine a light on them. It's time to shine a light on them. Yes, it is Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Jasmine Brand is here. I'm yes. not just any brand. I'm my own brand. I missed my drop, Angela. I just I missed the show. We need to give that to you so you have it at all times. <laughs> all right. Well, who do you want to shine a light on, Jasmine? I want to shine a light on my girl, Brandy, in Detroit. Brandy, the nail tech slayed my nails my nails you know i needed some work on my nails i was uh-huh. in detroit she came at the last minute she killed my nails she's a black woman she owns her own business she's super fast super efficient and she's super creative and she okay. really she you like my nails Angela? yeah they look cute I she saw really took yeah you can you can find her on instagram brandy the nail tech she's on instagram and she's in detroit if you're in detroit you have to have her do your nails okay absolutely well shout out to you brandy mm-hmm. you know we don't feel right when our nails aren't done we don't and it's, it's the so- worst i broke a nail the other day and i and my nails were already jacked up so i finally had to go and get them done because i was like i can't handle your it. your nails look good too i like that chrome yeah i love a little chrome it just gives it a little pow nails are so important too yeah especially when guys don't have their nails done we definitely look at that yeah like, or they're dirty yeah yeah I'm looking around the room right now. Okay. All right. Everybody hold your hands okay. up. If All you're right. with a guy right now, wow. Dan just threw up middle fingers at us. Nice. And no, you ne- did. And his nails were dirty. All right. Well, let's see who you guys want to shine a light on. 800-292-5150. Uh, G-Baby, how are you? Hey, Angela. What's going on? What's good? Who you want to shine a light on? I want to shine the light on my um my coworkers, Jordan Mark. Keontae, Saniqua, 
Um, I want to shine the light on uh, my entire family because every time we got something going on, you know, they're fully supportive. Yay. My cousins, the high family, H is up. Okay, sounds um, like you at work now. Yeah, I'm at work now. All right. That's n- nothing better than when you having a good time at work. I know, I know. So I was like, let me just shout out my coworkers because they always looking out. And I don't really know who else I want to shout out. Shout out to you. Shout out to um, the whole Bronx. Like, um. Okay, shout out to the BX. Thank you, G-Baby. Thank you. Hey, Mitchell, how are you? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Who do you want to shine a light on today? Um, to my mother. Okay. Um, she's been my strength and my guidance since I first laid eyes on her at birth. And we got baptized together at 12 years old, holding hands. And when I went in the military, went overseas, I became a helicopter door gunner. And when I got back, she's been my, my, my strength for me not getting high on drugs. And her prayers always kept me, kept me the right path and guided me. She's 90 years old, and wow. she's my best friend till this day. That's I a love blessing. her from the womb to the tomb. Well, Mitchell, thank you so much. And shout out to your mom. We love a mama's boy. Yes, I, that's my heart. If I know how a man loves his woman, watch how he loves his mother. Respect. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, that was your shine a light on him. Our shine a light on him. We need that energy to sit today. I promise you. 800-292-5150 is the number. Yee when we come back. And let's talk about Bobby Altoff. She did that interview with Drake, that awkward interview. And now she's getting some backlash after doing an interview with Dave Portnoy here. And we'll tell you what it's all about. Okay. Way up with Angela Yee. Yee next. Just like to talk like they Angela Yee, like they Angela Yee. Man, she's spilling it all. This is Yee T. Way up. Yes, it is Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Jasmine is here. Yes. I'm not just any brand. I'm my own brand. And it's time for some Yee Tea. Now, let's talk about Bobby Altoff and Drake and all of the drama mm. between this interview that she did uh, with him. You okay. know, she started off really big on TikTok. She started her own podcast, a really good podcast. And, um, oh, no, that's his podcast, right? Da, 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 da. All right. Well, anyway, um, so she started off on TikTok. Then she started her own podcast and she actually DM Drake. That's how she ended up getting an interview mm-hmm. with him. Yes. And this which is, is huge. Yeah, which is huge. I mean, she had been on with Funny Marco. She said that Drake was following her from that interview. And then, you know, she managed to get this this big interview with Drake. She was teasing it. It went really viral. A lot of people were wondering, well, why of all people did Drake do an interview with Bobby Altop? Well, since then, that interview is now taken down. Interesting. They've unfollowed each other. She did go to his concert and she posted an awkward video of her friends dancing and she's just kind of standing there looking awkward. Well, she went on with uh, Dave Portnoy. He's the founder of Barstool Sports. Mm-hmm. And here's what she had to say because she also went on Lil Yachty's podcast. I saw that. Right. And I guess uh, she had an awkward situation when she went to go do that. Here's what she had to say about sitting down with Lil Yachty. Because he was awkward. I walked into his house. He didn't even like say hi to me. So then I was like, said, let's go to the bathroom. So then we go to the bathroom <laughs> and then we like get out. And then he's like, he's just sitting there with like his two assistants and he's not even acknowledging that I'm like in the room. And my oh, camera guy's like get, setting up. I'm just sitting there like Skin on crawling. my phone, like tr- I'm like trying. And then he comes up. He's like, oh, hi. He gives me like a half hug. And I'm just like, hi. Then goes back to his spot. And I'm like, dude, I don't even want to do this. I'm texting my friend like, Ashley, I need to leave. This is so awkward. I don't want to like, what am I doing here? Right, so she said it was awkward. Can yeah, I say she's interview a little yachty? She's mm-hmm. awkward in general. Like, I feel like that's her brand is, is being awkward. Right, and she said, you know, her friend told her to lean into it. She didn't even <laughs> want to be there. Okay. Um. Then she ended up. Um. There was a rumor that she actually slept with Drake, and now she's getting a divorce. Mm-hmm. Now Dave Portnoy DM'd her about that rumor, and then she actually sat down with him, and that was the interview with him, and um. You know, after that interview, I guess he made it seem like it was no comment. So here's what happened with that. Ivana's like, I heard that Bobby slept with Drake and is getting divorced. So I asked her. I DM Bobby. What? You asked her, did you sleep with Drake and are you getting a divorce? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'm not commenting on that publicly. Wait, so you just outed her? Oh. You just outed her not public comment? Right. So it does make it seem like she just said no comment and that 
perhaps no comment means that did happen. Right. But also, it's kind of odd because when someone tells you something off the record, you usually don't talk about it publicly. Well, now, she just said it was a DM. He said it was a DM that she sent, right? But now she has posted that DM. Right. She said, I did not want to do this podcast in the first place, and now so much negativity is coming from it. I'm going to leave it alone after this. But this is the uncensored DM between Dave and I. So he DMs her. My girlfriend says you hooked up with Drake and got divorced. I'm saying that is not true. And she said, I am not commenting publicly, but off the record, you're right. That is not true. And he said, I knew I was right. And she hit, she hearted it. Yeah. And she hearted it. So a lot has happened from her uh, getting into this culture. And, you know, little Yachty Mm -hmm. had some comments about her also doing these interviews. And uh, after he did it, he wrote on Twitter, look, another white woman tricked hip hop again. She comes alive around her own people. Oh, and that is because in that interview with Dave Portnoy, she was talking about how awkward little Yachty was, but she seemed very comfortable in her element, as he's saying, uh, sitting down with Dave Portnoy. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot of drama did, off of this did, interview. Didn't Elliot Wilson have an issue with Drake doing this interview? Like, or he was saying, why give the interview to her? Yeah. Was that his issue? Yeah, and people thought that Elliot was saying, I want an interview, but he, he was saying it could have been someone else, not just him. Someone from the culture. Yeah, someone from the culture. Gotcha. And so he had, I think after that, apologized to, an, or maybe reached out to Drake. Okay. And, um, you know, clarified what it was that he meant from that. But it's a lot of drama from her just doing this interview. Well, I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't know her from TikTok. I knew who she was after she did the interview with Drake. That's who I figured, discovered who she I was. I had seen her funny Marco interview, but okay. I didn't really follow her like that. And I know some people were saying oh she had a huge following already right but this was definitely next level and then you see what happened yeah uh from all of that all right okay well that is your yeetie and when we come back we have about last night these are uh the things that we did last night that we want to share with you and i'm sure a lot of you will be able to relate to them i was exhausted yesterday you were but i was outside <laughs> moving and grooving all right it's way up with angela yee last night so about last night last night Last night, here's how it went down. Yes, it is Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Jasmine is here. Yes, I'm here, Angela. And what did you do yesterday? I know you came to New York. I just traveled. I didn't really do anything but traveled, and I hung out, and, you know, Mm -hmm. I had a few drinks and and got on a plane and came back to New York. (laughs) (laughs) What a life you live. (laughs) Well, yesterday I was running around a lot, and... um, you know, I had a meeting, and this is for my coffee and tea company. Mm-hmm. By the way, Coffee Uplifts uh, people will be in Target starting on Tuesday. Big deal, okay? Yes. Huge deal, Angela. So if you're in the Pennsylvania, D.C., Maryland, New York City, New Jersey area, mm-hmm. all right, it'll be available. So I'm excited for that, but I'll give you more details. It's been, a, and let me tell you, I'm very involved every step of the way in everything. I go to the meetings. Mm-hmm. Um, we also are in certain restaurants, and... And so we were just discussing the whole uh, coffee and tea experience right. at a restaurant. Right. A lot of times after dinner, you might want to have some type of dessert and you're like, I don't want another drink. Maybe I'll get a coffee drink. Mm-hmm. We actually have a, a, a coquito latte now that's amazing. Co- coquito latte. Yes, it's delicious. So if uh, you all haven't tried it, I do have a coffee shop in Brooklyn and we're trying to roll these different things out. We have jumbo coffee ice cubes, too, that melt inside oh. of the... Uh, the Duce Exo and creates a type of espresso this drink. Is a, this is a whole experience. It is. And I think when you go and dine at a restaurant, things like that are important. Presentation, mm-hmm. having a good quality tea. Don't just hand me no tea bag. Like, right. Here, this is your tea. But another other thing that I did yesterday was as I was walking around, I ended up going into a smoke shop. Okay. Right? And so it's always interesting to me when you go into a smoke shop, how do you decide what to get? Right. And you were in New York. I was in New York. Okay. And so I went into the smoke shop and um, I was trying to determine, like, what do I want? Mm-hmm. You know, of course, they have the options, uh, pre-roll. Right. Or do you want to buy it? So I prefer to to get it. But I never know which type of weed to get because I'm not an <laughs> expert. So what strain are you supposed to get? Right. So when you go in there... Um, I guess it's great when people are well versed and it's, they can helpful. direct you like how strong do you want it? Mm-hmm. You know, do you- so I always ask or not. Ask. I always say medium. All, so I don't, I don't want to die. I always <laughs> say I don't want to be sleepy. I want to stay up. And then they'll say, OK, you should go with this. I just tell them what kind of mood I want to be in. OK, because I'm not a. You know, I'm not a, a well versed either. Yeah, I have to get more uh, uh, well versed and then edibles. You know, edibles are more of my thing. That, that's your that's your ministry, yes. right? That is my ministry, <laughs> and I've been doing this since before it was legal. But yeah. um, 
But yeah, so edibles. And the main thing with that is when you go in, into the store, first of all, I need it to taste good. Yeah. Oh, oh, let's start there. Yeah, yeah. let's start there. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is sometimes with those, it's really hard, right? Because you don't know how it's going to hit you. You don't know how long it's going to take. Mm -hmm. So it's just really important to know how much of this should I take. And I always take a little less than what they tell me. It's great uh, having edibles with you because you will always start me off small, and you'll be like, "Let's just, no, let's just, just do try this. a little bit." Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, you, and then we'll wait, and then we'll check in after hour. Like, okay, do you feel it? Are you okay? You, like, you're good. You're a good person to have this experience. I with. don't be trying to get effed up. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm not trying to be like, oh, I can't do anything. Right. Ooh, I'm so so anyway, that was my day yesterday. So it was uh, coffee, tea, and edibles. <laughs> That's a, that, that sounds like a lit uh, and it's work. Wednesday. Yes, <laughs> and so. Um, I have, however, had some nightmare edible experiences. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have. I, I absolutely have. The first one I had, I will never forget this. I was in San Francisco mm -hmm. and I was there for two different things. I had to host a day party and then I was also there for a conference. This is so embarrassing. So look, I was in the <laughs> oh, hotel. I feel like you told me this. Go ahead. I go to the day party and they're bringing me these delicious edibles. They're gummies. They're watermelon. Mm, oh. And they look like little cute watermelon gum. And they're so small. So you don't know these little small edibles will pack such a punch. Mm -hmm. When I tell you, I ate like five of them. Angela. And this is super early for me. And I didn't know anything. And we're in San Francisco. So you already know it hits really hard oh, there. Oh, my God. So I was, I'll never forget. I was with Paris, who works with me. <laughs> and so we go back to the hotel. I don't even know what's happening at this point. Mm -hmm. And I have taken pictures with people. But my face feels like it's melting off. <laughs> Not a melted face. And so I get back to the hotel. And I get to my room. And the key doesn't work. Or so you thought, maybe? No, it really didn't work. <laughs> Paris was with me, like, uh -huh. making sure that I was good. And mind you, the conference is also in this hotel. So there's people oh that gosh. are going to be at this conference in the hotel. And I'll tell you what happens when we come back. <laughs> All right, 800-292-5150 is a number. We do want to hear what your edible nightmare stories are because... Mine, yeah. I mean, it was. A, I learned my lesson from that, and that's not the only one I had, but right. I do want to hear yours too. I'll finish it when we get back. 800 292 5150. Let's hear your edible stories. Not bad, get it. You vibe the way up with Angela Yee. Yes, it is Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine is here. Yes. I'm not just any brand. I'm my own brand. People were starting to think that Jasmine and Mano are the same person because they're never in the room at the same time. <laughs> but Mano is here. No, Mano. Without headphones. I, Where's your headphones? Yeah, this is, this is how I get treated when Jasmine they're gets They're right in that. front of you. They're yeah. right in um, front of you. But we're talking about edibles mm -hmm. and experiences because I went to a smoke shop yesterday. Right. And I was like, man, I don't even know what to get. Like when mm -hmm. it comes to uh, getting some. But the first time I ever took edibles, I was in San Francisco mm -hmm. and I took way too many. I mm -hmm. ate a whole bunch of watermelon gummies and they were so small. I had no idea they would pack a punch right. like that. Small but powerful. Yes. And I was hosting a day party and then I had to do a conference out there. And I got back to the hotel. I didn't know what was going on. I get to my room. I'm outside the door. I'm with Paris, who works with me. Right. And my key doesn't work. Mm. And she... So I ended up just laying on the floor. Oh, outside the room. Outside the room because I couldn't make it back down the stairs to try to get a key. So she was going to go down, but she didn't want to leave me there. By yourself. And she was like, Angela, you have to get up there. There's people from the conference, <laughs> you know, because they were all staying at the hotel because that's where the conference was. Right. So fortunately, we ended up seeing somebody who worked at the hotel and they went downstairs and got the key for us because she didn't want to leave me there by myself. Shout out to Paris. Yeah, yeah. laying on the floor. <laughs> and then I was fine the next day, but when I tell you that mm. night was rough. What about you, Mano? Oh, you want to bring you want to bring that up? <laughs> hmm? Since I'm your glad brother, you walked in. Your brother, your brother sold me 25 cookies. <laughs> All right, let's talk about how it really happened. You called me I and called you, you said, "Hey, can your brother make me some cookies?" 25. Yeah, you said you wanted 25 cookies. I wanted 25. Because he just makes them recreationally, mm -hmm. you know. And so I was like, Mano wants to get some cookies. Can you do it? He was like, all right, no problem. Mm -hmm. So I was on my way to the studio, but I went to pick up um, the 25 cookies. They were delicious. Right? He told me to take half. <laughs> okay. Half of one? Half of one. Okay, mm -hmm. half of one cookie. So I was on That's my, good advice. I was on my mm -hmm. way to do a, a session with Raekwon. Mm -hmm. And Shout out to I had my son with me. Purple tape. My son was, was young back then. He was maybe about six or seven. Oh wow, that's a while ago. Yeah, well, maybe eight. And then I uh I took half of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I got in the car and I, I left. Okay. And I got there and I said, man, I don't feel nothing. Mm. How so, long had it been? No, this this is back to back. Okay. 
This is back to back. So right away you thought you were going to do it. I took another half and then another half. I wound up taking a cookie and a half. Ooh. Oh, he told you to take a half, but you took All a right, so you did three times the recommended dosage. So now when I tell you this, Uh-oh. I had uncontrollable laughter. <laughs> that sounds pleasant. I was forgetting everything that I was saying in the middle of a conversation. I could not <laughs> record. They was like, God, you okay? <laughs> I thought I was, and let me tell you, that high kept hitting, it kept elevating. Mm, I right. was high from Friday to Monday. Oh my gosh. I was panicking, I was shaking, <laughs> and I was paranoid. I, am I going to be like this for the rest of my life? What happened to the other 23 and a half cookies? I never touched them. They were sitting in my cabinet for three years. Oh. You learned your lesson. All right. Well, yeah, yeah Mayna, you didn't listen. Well, we want to hear your guys' edible stories. 800-292-5150. Hey, Nick. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? We're talking some edible stories. What's yours? Uh, it's a long story, but I'll make it short for you guys. Okay. So, <laughs> I was uh, 19, just moved out of my parents' house, moved into a trailer park with my uh, buddy, thought it was the best, most awesome you know, thing in the world. Celebrated that night by uh, trying an edible for the first time, mm. and uh, it was a brownie. You're supposed to eat like a fourth of it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I ate the entire thing. <gasps> uh -oh. uh that was back in like 2013, so it was still somewhat kind of new. About an hour or two after it kicked in, uh, somebody started banging on our door. And this was uh, right when it had, you know, I was peeking. And uh, it sounded like a cop knock, so I started freaking out. My neighbor, or sorry, my roommate answered the door. And uh, it was a neighbor lady screaming. The trailer next to us was on fire. You heard painful screams and everything. It was an intense moment, and I couldn't handle it while on edibles. I was freaking out, anxious. So uh, I go outside. It's too much to handle. I hear cops coming. I start freaking out. I'm all messed up, not sober. So I think the cops are going to blame me. So I start running, running. It's out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, what felt like five minutes was probably longer, maybe not. But uh yeah, I get lost in the cornfield. <laughs> no idea where I'm at. No, uh, no way movie. to get back to work. Yeah, horrible, horrible. So <laughs> I just sit there and. Uh, Did you cry? So I sober up. I, I can't remember. I was crying on the inside. I know that. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing with us. That's amazing. It's amazing there was a cornfield right there. <laughs> Convenient. Are you yeah, sure you were in a cornfield? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cornfield for sure. All right, thank you for sharing. Thank God you're All right, okay. Thank you guys. Bye. All right, have a good one. <laughs> I feel like he set the fire. <laughs> he might have. <laughs> hey, Brika. What's up? What's up? So you have an edible story for us? Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. Okay, let's hear it. All right, so I'm at the weed spot talking to the weed man. I'm letting him know I, I got jury duty. It's one of them type of jury duties where you got to sit in there all day. Oh. We was there for a week. Mm. He was like, well, take some of these edibles that, that way you ain't got to smoke. Come back smelling like smoke. But oh, I was that's like, that's a good you. suggestion. Right. Maybe. But this is my first time. And I'm like, you know, I ain't know that you supposed to eat it piece by piece or right. little by little. So I'm, I'm waiting till I get hungry and I'm scarfing down edibles at uh -oh. snack time or whatever. Uh -oh. I end up in court tripping now. <laughs> like, I mean, it made court so interesting. But at the same time, <laughs> you know, it happens. I'm laughing at the lawyers. It's real life law and order. Like I'm oh, smirking. No. I'm making all these. Everybody looking at me. I look like a real deal smoker. I ended up being like paranoid, thinking I'm going to go to jail at the end of the day. Oh my gosh! Listen, that's a good way to get out of jury duty. It is. They be like, he tripping like. Yeah, you gonna go to jail? Oh my bad, I'm cursing. It's all right. <laughs> you gonna go to jail? That's funny. Well, I'm from. It ain't legal where we at. Oh man. Well, at least it made it interesting for you. Yeah, I'm glad we did. We're glad you didn't get locked up. Now, if I did it the right way, it probably would have been better. But I had, I did like you, and I went ahead and and, and scarfed out. All right. <laughs> well, you know, we're not alone. Thank right. you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for sharing your edible stories. Uh, what's the moral here? I don't know. What is the moral? I think it's just take a little bit and wait some hours before you do too much. You'd rather underdose than overdose. Baby, baby steps. Baby yeah, steps. baby steps. All right. When we come back, we have Yee Tee. And y'all know Drake is petty. Well, he sent Fat Joe a gift because remember, Fat Joe said he's jealous <laughs> of Drake. We'll tell you what it was. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Oh, she about to blow the lid up off this pot. Let's get it. Oh, yeah. Angela's feeling that Yee Tee. Come and get the tea. Yes, it is Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Jasmine is here. Yes. I'm not just any brand. 
I'm my own brand. And look, it's Mano. New Mano. It's Mano. I get demoted when Jasmine comes back, right? How do you get demoted? I don't when she when she's not here. I don't want this chair no more, and I don't want them headphones. I want to stay right here. You, you, hold on, you use my <laughs> headphones when I'm not here. Angela, what? Yeah. Mano uses my headphones when I'm not here? Yeah. You should be here. All right, well, let's get into some UT. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> let's talk about Drake and Fat Joe. Now, Fat Joe had went live, and he was saying that he is uh, jealous of Drake. That's a nice uh, confession, because <laughs> most people will never admit that. Here's what he said. And let me tell you why I might be jealous of Drake. This room is this airplane, which looks like the flyest plane in the world, was actually given to him by a friend. Then there's a guy who owns all the crypto huh? He buys the Tupac ring for a million dollars and gives it to Drake. Bro, they won't give me a pack of socks. <laughs> well, well, Drake heard that, mm -hmm. okay, and actually sent Fat Joe a birthday present. Congratulations, Fat Joe, it's your birthday. You got a present from steak. Oh my God, let me see what they gave us. Fat Joe Sot. Yo, this is the most disrespectful <laughs> shit I've seen in my life. Yo, Steak, yo, Drake. I said I don't have a sock or a croissant. Goddamn, be careful what you wish for. Mm. I, that, Fat Joe can tell us a story. Yes, he yes it says Steak. That's uh, Drake's company. Fat Joe's Socks. Remember we saw we saw Drake's uh, plane. Oh, yeah, when we were in St. Martin. Mm -hmm. in Everybody, you know, mm -hmm. it, where it was... Um, what do you say? Parked? I don't know. Yeah. Oh. How do you, what do you, what do you do? When is a, is it a yeah. Park. yeah. So you can see it from the highway. Right. So everybody's mm -hmm. always like, you know, that's uh, Drake's plane over there. And people really stopped to like, look at his plane. Right. And when we saw it, people were getting on the plane. So yep. I think, you know, people have to land in St. Martin and then they go to St. Bart's. Right. I think it we was saw him in New the club. Year's. No, we saw him in the club. So we saw him in the club too. He takes that plane there. everywhere. That's the only plane he flies Yes, it's his. I yeah. Guess. yeah I, oh. I would too, if I had right. a plane. He stopped and said, what's up to Angela at the club? Yep. Angela's we, so famous. No. <laughs> I was, I tell think you what you're happened. Famous? We were in St. Martin and it's a, um, no, we were in Turks and Caicos. Oh, yeah, we were in Turks. We saw him in Turks and Caicos. Yep. And he was in the club. I think Kevin Durant was there too. It was a chill night. And I was, uh, going to the bathroom. And so I come out of the bathroom and there's security standing outside the bathroom and Drake was about to go in, but they had like stopped everybody else from coming. But fortunately, I was able to <laughs> go and urinate. <laughs> <laughs> because you, you, you're you. Because she's geek. Well, I was coming out, so that's you know. I guess I was no. in the bathroom already because it's different stalls, like it's so, hey, all separate Angelina bathrooms. Lee. And he just stopped, said hi. You know me, I'm not gonna do too much. I just right. said, hey, how you doing? Good to see you, and kept it moving. Mm -hmm. um, you know. All right. Uh, and speaking of Fat Joe, he also has his blackout Air Force Ones, and so that's gonna be available for everybody. Another story. I was just at Rucker Park over the weekend. Okay. And they actually gave me a pair of these sneakers, too. Mm. And they're really nice. I, yeah, I huh. enjoy them. They were like, uh, can you change your sneakers? Do you mind? Now, mind you, the sneakers are black and white. It did not match my outfit at all. But did you oblige? Yes. I was like, sure, no problem. I'll put them on. One thing about the Rucker, they, they have a pair of Nikes for you when you yeah. get there. <laughs> I'm not real. mad at it. They're very nice sneakers. So those are going to be available for everybody. It has the TS uh, Terror Squad logo on the back of it. And so um, super nice. Okay. And they had your size ready, sitting away. They had my size ready. Mm -hmm. All right. Britney Spears is single again. She has been seen without her wedding ring. And they have announced she has split from her husband, Sam Asghari. And some people are speculating... <laughs> That the divorce is because of Plies. Now, wow. Plies has been posting Britney Spears nonstop. He's been calling her things like White Diamond. <laughs> He's been talking about the underwear. Where does she get those underwear that she wears in all of the videos that she's dancing? And here's one of Plies' videos. And like she's been a walk off and come back. Look, 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 Well, once they announced the divorce and the split, everybody was saying it's Ply's fault. Ply's is in the, so in the comments. funny. He is so funny. Those underwear that she wears, he's like, where do you find those? <laughs> they sit really low. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? You don't have none like that? Just, just asking. She got to wear the same ones for a week. We'll yes. talk about that later today. All okay? right. Well, that is your <laughs> Yeeti. And when we come back, we have Under the Radar. These are the stories that are not necessarily in the headlines. They are flying under the radar. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Yeah, news. This is the news that relates to you. These stories are flying under the radar. Yes, it is Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And Jasmine is here. Yes, I'm here, Angela. And Mano is here. Yeah. Oh, 
All right. Now, let's do some under-the-radar stories. These are stories that are not necessarily in the headlines, but they are very important. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they deal with food, I've noticed. Um, Which I love. All right. But first, let's talk about the school day. A lot of U.S. school districts are shifting to a four-day week. So in Missouri this year, uh, they're trying a four-day week as uh, kids are going back to school. They're going to have Mondays off. Mm. And there's a growing number of districts across the country that have moved to adapt this alternative weekly schedule in recent years. And so the instructional minutes will be almost exactly the same because they're going to add 35 extra minutes onto each day. Okay, so Monday's off. So why are they doing it? Um, I guess they're trying to figure out ways that can be more effective. Uh, They're talking about potential costs. you know, and there's also teacher teaching applications have gone up since they've introduced this. So I'm not sure what that's going to be. But, you know, a four day work week, it's a, they said it's a better way to tackle a teacher shortage as well. It's all. Yeah. To attract more teachers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. A four day work week is behind that, I think. I, for, I, w- for I, us. I feel like I would rather have Friday off as opposed to Monday if I was in school. <laughs> that's just me. I, I that's why you never hear Friday. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah, we've noticed that in real life. Uh, I'll be here tomorrow. And that's a Friday. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, you know what? I'm not mad at a Monday off, though, because psychologically, when you go back to Mondays, always feel like, oh, it's Monday. But it makes it, um, having a Monday off, it makes it difficult for parents with kids. Like, Mm -hmm. what are you supposed to do if you you have to work? So what are you going to do with your kid on a Monday? Yeah, and and that is true because child care is going to matter for parents who need child care on Mondays. Uh, And actually, in Missouri, they're offering $30 a day for that for parents who need child care okay i don't know. i don't know how much thirty dollars a day <laughs> i don't is know if that's gonna work but what okay you gonna do with that yeah <laughs> so that's what we're saying uh, I it, it makes it t- it makes it tough for working parents if you know but it, all right now uh, you know we always talk about food when yeah. it comes to these under the radar stories and new jersey has ordered that boston market stop operations across the entire state oh mm. man that's so <laughs> terrible why <laughs> may know I, I I like Boston Market. I used to go in Boston Market sometimes on lonely uh, Thanksgivings. Aww. That's actually why they got famous to begin with, right? Because they have a very Thanksgiving style menu: the mm-hmm. rotisserie chickens, yeah. the Boston Carver sandwiches. Um, they've been having a lot of financial issues. Really? Though the headquarters of Boston Market a few months ago has been returned to the company after it was seized by the Colorado Department of Revenue over unpaid back taxes and withheld wages. They had seized the headquarters and and those restaurants in Colorado after issuing these warrants. And so they've been having a lot of uh, financial problems as of December. They were roughly about 300 Boston markets that were operating uh, nationwide. But now it looks like a lot more of these are going to be closing. And this has to do with violations and wages that were owed to workers across the the state of New Jersey. Um, Yeah. Mm, Okay. When's the last time y'all had Boston Market? I haven't had it in a while because it's hard to find them now. I know. It's one in Jersey. Okay. Well, not no more. Yeah. <laughs> they, they shutting them jokers <laughs> right down. Right when you get by the, not that far from the bridge, right? right. Yeah. So it, it had closed down before and then it opened back up. Yeah. Okay. Well, they're having some issues, guys. So if you can find a, there used to be Boston Markets in Manhattan. I used to go there it all the time. You, right, what it did was you, one on 23rd. Yep, exactly. What did you like to, uh, what was your I favorite? I used to like the Boston Carver sandwich. Mm, you know, okay. it was like a chicken rotisserie sandwich. They were really good. And they had the candy yams yeah, too. The mashed potatoes. Oh, wow. Corn, I, like the, I like the mashed potatoes. Yeah, Y'all, I'm too. hungry. Yeah. I am too. All right. Well, unfortunately, a lot of times it's the business side of things and not necessarily the food. But there were back wages and penalties. And they said this stop work order could be lifted if and when those remaining back wages and penalties have been paid and all related issues have been resolved. So Hmm. pay them people. Pay them people. Yeah. All right. Well, that is your under the radar. Now, you you know, we do have the way up mix coming at the top of the hour. Plus, little Zan is going to be joining us today. You know, Mano did a song with little Zan in the past. We did. Never. Yes. came out me him and all uh, jazzy Faye. you have all I these wanna, songs yeah. i want to say uh tyler was on that song too i think oh wow that out. okay all right well that is again you're under the radar we have the way up mix at the top of the hour on a thursday jasmine's favorite day of the week that's why she's here it's way up with angela <laughs> they say it's truth in the room ah! from industry shade to all the gossip Out, angela's spilling that yee tea talk to him Yes, it is way up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine is here. Yeah, I'm not just any brand. I'm my own brand. Mano is here. New Mano. New Mano. New Mano. New Mano. 
And it's time for some yee tea for y'all. Now, Paramount is dropping their plans to sell the stake in BET Media Group. Mm -hmm. That includes VH1 and BET Cable Networks and BET Plus, the streaming service. If y'all recall, there were reports... Why are you shaking your head, Jasmine? Because it was crazy. Yeah, Tyler Perry was buying it, and then they said he... People thought he really bought it. Yeah, people thought he bought it, Mm -hmm. but they said his bid just wasn't enough money. Uh, Mm. Paramount had received bids for the stake ranging from 2 to $3 billion, according to reports, Um, but... I guess they've decided not to go ahead and sell it right now, and they didn't think it would be a meaningful sale. Mm. So, how much do, do, do they actually want for it? Now, I thought they wanted three billion. Yeah, I, I feel like we it was all speculation. But yeah, everything was speculation. Yeah. Uh, Roland Martin from the beginning had said that this wasn't real. Mm-hmm. Really? And then he posted, this is why I told y'all to stop repeating crap from bogus websites who don't know a damn thing. A lot of folks repeated that crap saying <laughs> Tyler Perry had bought BET. It was all over social media. Well, Viacom has pulled the sale. Per the Wall Street Journal, the company notified bidders Wednesday evening that it decided to end the sale process because it concluded that a sale wouldn't result in any meaningful deleveraging of its balance sheet. Translation, we could couldn't find a fool willing to overspend buying a depreciating asset. Okay. And, and, and Roland Martin's going to talk about this he on his show that? tonight. He yeah. said that? Yes. Yeah, he said it on Twitter. Here's it. Wow. Here's it right here. Yeah. Roland is funny. He couldn't find any fool. He was. He definitely... He co-hosted here on your show and yes, he talked about and it. and he talked about it up here. Yeah. All right. Now, Drake, in the meantime, he could have bought BET. <laughs> Yeah, Drake could have bought BT. <laughs> he gave a random fan a Birkin bag at his show, a pink Birkin bag. So nice. that's exciting. And... What, uh, what do Birkins run for, Angela? I don't know. I don't have one. But I think about $15,000 Okay, maybe and okay. up. And it depends also if it's like some type of animal, um, uh, python or whatever. But gotcha. don't get me to lying. Have okay. you ever bought a Birkin for anyone, Mano? No. <laughs> well, I don't know but if I, I believe it. I've also never wanted a Birkin. Like, I've never yeah. been like, I must have a Birkin bag. Yeah, they're not my thing. Okay. They're also out of my budget. Yeah. I've, yeah. I mean, I could have saved up. You know, for it and use my points. <laughs> you know, I love using my points. Uh-huh. You think I bought somebody one of them? Maybe not. Maybe just no, Chanel. You done Never. a few Chanels? He definitely has done Chanel. Definitely. Yeah, he look like a Chanel guy. But for sure, he's bought Gucci. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. One y'all thousand crazy. percent. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Wow. All right. We ain't lying though. No. We ain't. Yeah, with y'all crazy. So. And for sure, Michael Kors. Ah! Never. Yes. Okay. All Never. right, let's continue. Jamar Chase <laughs> is filing a restraining order against a woman he says is harassing him. And this is all after a one night stand. Mm. They said that he, uh, this woman, Amber Hunter, he had a one night stand with her and since then has been harassing him and his family on social media. Even his own mother. She's been harassing his mother, apparently mm-hmm. putting out phone numbers. Oh, gosh. Uh, she claimed that Chase, that Jamar Chase is a, de- a deadbeat dad and she was a victim of his domestic abuse. He said he does not even share a child with her despite mm. her claims and that she used photos of another person's child and claimed it as her own oh no when you so when you, you when you have one night stands you leave it at that uh jazz or do you uh, keep I, it going i thought i had a one night stand before but it turns out i did not have a one night stand. Well, did not. no yeah. two nights then well, it was a, a few it was a few nights it, it started a, as a one night i thought it was going to be a you, one night and then i him. then i told angela what happened and angela said no 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 yeah one night means one night yeah and the guy yeah. still called me afterwards so i guess it wasn't one night yeah so but you met him and then knocked him off that same night well i would like to talk about the next story angela <laughs> yes back to jmr chase mm-hmm. uh the judge did grant him that temporary restraining order against his alleged harasser she has to stay at least 100 yards away from him and his mom as well and they're going to have a hearing to see if this will be a permanent one that's going to be september 7th you know how embarrassing i mean this this is embarrassing (laughs) <laughs> you, this is embarrassing. I'm, it's like secondhand embarrassment. All right, now let's do a fun story. Beanie Man. He Beanie was on Man. a flight and they were going to the Bahamas. So imagine Beanie Man's on your flight and he gets up and does an impromptu performance. That has to be amazing. Here is what it sounded like. Oh, na, 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 na. Oh, na, 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 all right, so if I say, Sim Sima. Oh, my. Here comes to the middle. No hesitation in any situation. Yeah, man. Yeah. 
Yeah. I wish oh I was on that God. plane. I would have been. Oh, you would have been standing up doing yeah, your Jamaican walk up and real, down that aisle. He would have been. He would have went crazy. Big it yeah. up, big it up, lion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really, Mano lion. lion. Yeah. Mano's lion. lion. Um, Stop <laughs> tapping and playing with me. And also, big shout out to Shinsia. She got her first gold certification in the United States since we're talking Jamaica and okay. we're talking Jamaica. Beanie Man. Yeah, shout out to Shinsia. All right. And that is it. That is your Yeeti. When we come back, let's talk about because Bahamas is trending. Part mm-hmm. of it is because of this Beanie Man performance. Okay. But we'll tell you el- what else is what everybody's talking about is way up with Angela Yee. Yeah, she back at it. Bring it, bring in the Mac. We up with Angela Yee is on. Yes, it is way up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Mayno is here. Yes, I am. No, Mayno. Jasmine ran down to get some Thai food. <laughs> yeah, you know she's hungry because she, you know, she having a baby. So oh, stop saying that. She said, please do not. All right, do not, do not. you're gonna make that trend. But right now we're talking about things that are trending and why. You know, all throughout the show, that's how I really find out a lot of times and stay updated as to, as far as to what's going on. Uh, Slim Shady is trending right now, and I see why. Uh, Buzzing Pop posted, "What's the most iconic alter ego in music?" And they had Nicki Minaj and Roman Zelensky, Sasha. Fee- Beyonce. They had Tina Snow from Meg Thee Stallion. Um, they had Hannah Montana, Miley Cyrus, and Slim Shady was up there as well. So it feels like... Uh, so who was number one? Well, I think the reason why Slim Shady was trending because a lot of people probably felt like Slim Shady mm. was iconic. Right? Um, now, something else that was trending was Selena Gomez. And why is Selena Gomez trending? Well, apparently she is putting out a single and that single is going to be coming out August 25th and you can pre-save it now. She posted, y'all have been asking for a new music for a while since I'm not quite done with SG3. I wanted to put out a fun little song I wrote a while back that's perfect for the end of summer. Single soon. Uh, pre-save it now. Selena Gomez be having people in a chokehold on social media all the time now another thing that is trending is plies we talked about this earlier and that's all because britney spears is getting a divorce and for some reason people feel like it's because of plies and they're blaming it on him like he was uh i guess the side piece or something (laughs) turned to the main piece and he is definitely going right along with it here is what he posted most recently He's hilarious. Listen, if him and Brittany end up going out, Angela, that would be a time. Stop it right now. It would. It It would would be be a time. It would be great content. (laughs) All right. Another person who is trending right now is Quavo. And that's because Tusi bought Quavo out during his show in Atlanta. So. Um, they said he also used the Atlanta Brave Stadium to test out new album material ahead of the release. And that part was on TMZ also. So a lot of things going on on okay. social media uh, today. So just giving you guys a little update. This is kind of how we do things. Yeah. You have a good time slot for your show. And stuff is always trending during your show, I feel like. Yeah. And I'm, sometimes I'm like, why is this trending? It'll be like a random thing mm-hmm. um, that'll be trending like Sometimes I'm looking at it and I don't know who that's actually how I find out who people are, Mm -hmm. (laughs) what phrases are and what's going on. So, yes, that's sure. Some of the things that you can check out right now. I told you earlier the Bahamas was trending. Mm -hmm. A lot of that had to do with Beanie Man on that flight and how exciting that was. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Are you? Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Do do, um, Jamaican people be offended or do they love it? it? Are they offended because I'm working on my accent? Because I'm, but you're working on it on air in, in like <laughs> in real time. Yeah, usually you perfect I'm not it. And making then... nobody. I'm not making fun of nobody. I'm making. This is my accent. <laughs> this is he my is. accent. I'm not just making fun I'm of nobody. <laughs> and we have a Jamaican in the room, by the way. Jamaican. Baby, are you offended that I'm working on my accent and I'm trying to get better? <laughs> he runs our boards. Not offended, but it needs work. And okay, I no problem. But I've never heard his accent. So I, don't I was know at a whole right Jamaican person. family house this past summer. A whole Jamaican's family's house. Yes, and working on my. Is he's our makeup artist? Is she Jamaican or she's from? No, she's, she's Guyanese Trini? and Trini. She's uh, yeah, okay. she's Trini and Guyanese. Gotcha. But okay. Yes, yes, Jamaican. It's like saying some of my best friends are Jamaican, <laughs> so I can do this accent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that is your what's trending now. 
Uh, when we come back, Little Zan is going to be joining us, Little right? Little Zan. And Little Zan. <laughs> We got to work on this. <laughs> uh, it's way up with Angela Yee, Little Zan, uh, shortly. And he's got a lot going on, but he's sober right now. And I know he wants to talk about his journey and him coming back out, going on tour, doing shows, new music, all of that. It's way up with Angela Yee. Now I'm back, 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 and I'm back, get it. You vibe the way up with Angela Yee. Yes, it is Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine is here. Yes. Mayno is here. Yes, I'm here. Mayno. Mm-hmm. Mayno. And me and Jasmine got some gifts today. Sorry, man, none for you. But this is actually... Of course not. I'm nobody. ...from Alicia Keys' makeup line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She sent us some of her Keys Soul Care. Mm-hmm. And so we have some illuminating serum, the Let Me Glow. We have a concealer and tint. It's like skin, two-in-one concealer and tint. I can't wait to try which that. Which I love, because mm-hmm. then it's like not as heavy as a foundation. Yeah. We got a, a sheer flush cheek tint, a makeup sponge, a lip balm... And a concealer brush. It's a lot of stuff. Yes, thank you to Alicia Keys. Thank start you. giving this address out and start <laughs> receiving my gifts. I have a gift coming for you. No. Yeah, shout out to my guy Boo at um, Flea Club. He's sending all of us Flea Club sweatsuits. Love Boo. In Chicago, right? Yes, yeah, in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Thank so, you, Alicia Keys. Thank you, Boo. Thank you, D. And thank you, Alicia Keys. She kept her word because when she was up here, she was like, I'm going to send you guys some makeup. Yep, she did. And people say, so, but she definitely did. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Thank you. In addition to that, Essence Studio sent a Time of Essence, 50 Years of Defining Culture, five-part docuseries, actually uh, streams on Max starting on uh, Fridays at 9 p.m. Okay. Yeah, so you can check that out, too. I'll give you guys more information. I do have Max. All of these different streaming services. But yes, I do have Max because that was HBO. But uh, like I told you guys earlier, Little Zan is going to be joining us. Or as Mano calls him, Little Zan. Little (laughs) Zan. (laughs) <laughs> um, he no longer uses Xanax, but he went through a lot of different things publicly. He told me a story about you too, Mano. Yeah, L.A. He said that <laughs> when he was living in L.A., he did a video mm-hmm. from your place and mm-hmm. pretended it was his and you yeah. got mad. <laughs> Mano, wh- I wasn't that mad. Mm. He was like, remember, Mano got mad at me? He probably was shook. <laughs> he did a video pretending he lived where you live. And he was like, Mano was like... It was in a penthouse in the level. Mm-hmm. It was building downtown in... Uh, Downtown LA. Okay. But he used to always be there. We had fun. There was a studio in there. <laughs> that sounded like a good all, time. Yeah, we had a good time. Too man. good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, too, yeah really, really too good. All right. Well, Little Zan, when we come back, it's way up with Angela Yee. Yeah, she back at it. Bring it, bring in the back. back. Way up with Angela Yee is on. What's up? It's way up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Diego is here, aka yeah. Lil Zan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, he was asking me. He's like, "How do you want to be uh, introduced?" Um, I appreciate that a lot, though. But I like both. Yeah, Diego, Lil Zan. Um, okay. Appreciate you for having me. Are you thinking, or have you ever thought about changing your name? Yeah, yeah. Um, a few years ago, I wanted to rebrand fully into mm-hmm. Diego. I thought, you know, the name. I still think the name Lil Zan is kind of ridiculous. You know. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how I even got like 1% of what I did with that name. It was a product of how ignorant the time was. It was like SoundCloud days. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there was a time where I wanted to just rebrand as Diego. And I think I did it in a horrible way. It could be career suicide to like change your whole name like that. So Mm -hmm. I like both. All right. Well, let's get into that because you did call yourself Little Xan because you were addicted to Xanax. Mm -hmm. Right. And but there's a reason that that happened. It goes back to about like when I was 18 mm-hmm. around uh, I was hospitalized, but it turned out to just be a, a really bad case of anxiety. Mm-hmm. So what they did was they prescribed what they normally do is they prescribe you out which is basically just Xanax, you know, and then they try to get you off it quick because, you know, it's a terrible substance. But once they took me off, I still felt like I needed that piece from anxiety. You know, like it took away like a lot of my you know what I thought were my problems Mm -hmm. so once you know they took me off I was like ah man I I need to find that again so that's what led me to kind of to uh to finding it you know on the streets and stuff like alternative methods and at the same time the music was blowing up so much too though yeah see when you give like a young kid like that a lot of money and and fame and and not proper guidance like a good team around him it's a recipe for disaster of course something problematic is gonna come from that you know Mm -hmm. um and unfortunately that was my case I didn't have uh the right people you know around me 
uh, just more money focused kind of. And then I remember, and I actually know Stat Quo, and I know yeah. he used to manage you because yeah. I used to work for Eminem. But I remember that, um, you know, you publicly said that he was just giving you drugs at mm. that time. But I know then I, I've seen you walk that back too. Yeah, how I handled that um, was terrible. And why it was terrible, because I was on drugs when I made those uh, statements. Mm -hmm. And what I regret about that is obviously being on drugs when I made that statement because a lot of people didn't take me very seriously when I said it. And I mean, why would you? I, I look, I'm all crazy on live, all, you know, wild. And I wish I would have took a step back and thought about it and mm -hmm. thought of a better manner to maybe present that kind of, I don't know, information, I guess, forward. Because I was fed up. I felt like they were just dragging me along by like a little string just so I wouldn't, you know, tell on them or anything. And they weren't doing anything for my career. I just wish I could have expressed how I felt in a better manner because mm -hmm. that going on live and when I was all messed up on Zans it was just it just was a bad picture it made me look bad you know? right now I'm talking to little Zan you also now I wanted to ask you with the rebranding you do have all these tattoos yeah, yeah. do you have regrets about that uh no no I get that question a lot yeah. that's a good question um people ask you know are you going to you know get a lot of them removed going forward or when you're a little bit older uh, and to that, it's like, you know, there's so many wild kids that look like me uh, in this, <laughs> from this generation that I think I'll be fine. I think there'll be a... You're not going to go get a corporate job. Yeah, yeah, I, I think, fine. yeah, yeah, exactly. I think there'll <laughs> always be a little niche click for me in the old people era, you know, uh, with face <laughs> tattoos and, and had a wild life, you know. And I know right now it's a it's a weird time for you because there's yeah. been things that for your own sanity, you've had to cancel and restructure. And sometimes that makes people not trust. Like, is he really going to going to show up? Mm -hmm. Is he reliable? Uh, is he someone we can trust? And, and that that goes into a, a big part of my past that I regret. You know, I wish so much I could be this person back then, you know, a little bit older, a little bit more mature. Because uh, when you're unreliable, like a record label is going to look at that like, well, we don't need him. He's unreliable. Mm -hmm. Or like burning bridges. Like, well, why do we need him? He's unreliable. He's on drugs. He's wilding out. Look at him. You know, like that was something I, I really regret in the past was burning a lot of maybe bridges that, you know, that, that's what we're doing now is we're, it's like a, we're coming back around <laughs> and we're like, yo, though. Because you good. were early. Okay? Yeah, yeah. It's like, put that up yeah, for yeah, yeah. listening. Yeah, they yeah. were like, he's here. I was like, he's here already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I, what we're doing now is I, I have a good solid team. They had, they had found me right when I was getting out of rehab, actually, mm -hmm. which is a perfect time because that was when I really decided to stay sober. And, and they have helped me tremendously, you know, like uh, I didn't think I could even get back in like buildings, you know, without uh, certain degrees. But yeah, so I'm very grateful to be in the position I am right now. Very grateful. And I know at one point you had tried to not go to rehab and just cold turkey, quit everything. Mm -hmm. You also ended up having seizures yes. and doing that and, and then having to go to rehab. Yeah, I went cold turkey completely and it sucks. You know, anybody that's gone through withdrawals knows that that's just horrible. Um, and then I had a few seizures that kind of really put perspective into my life. It was a wake up call. And as bad as those seizures were and affected me, I think I'm very grateful that they happened because maybe I wouldn't be as you know sober i guess uh, yeah, i'm not going through that again or maybe i wouldn't be here you right. know even worse um so it was a crazy wake-up call you know and you went to scott storch's rehab facility shout out to uh yeah scott storch and steve labelle they helped me out tremendously too um that, that that's a cool rehab that's a cali sober rehab where, yeah because uh, it's a weed friendly rehab yeah, right yeah, okay it's, yeah. so break this down for me like mm -hmm. what what did you have to do how long were you there yeah they believe that it's just a it's a form of therapy a form they don't force you to do it you know that's a, right. yeah like they're not like oh smoke this you got it's just weed friendly yeah it's just like if you do and it's at designated times it's very uh like professional how long did you go there for see the thing is they had sent me to a detox which was also um from their partners and mm -hmm. so you could actually even smoke weed at the detox which is the pre part before it's like you go to the detox to make sure you're not going to die from you know uh getting off the drugs and then the rehab part is the rehabilitation part so i did uh 30 days of the detox helping me get off weaning me off of everything and then i did about a month of the the rehab but then left, you know, uh, mm -hmm. against everybody's will. You know, they always say like, oh, you're going to relapse if you leave. Uh, and, and I respect what their opinions, but I, I knew at that point I could stay on this straight line of sobriety myself. How many times did you end up, you know, saying I'm off, I'm done this and then because I know now it's been like almost two years, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But prior to that, it's not easy. A lot of people try it and then they end up going back. How many times did you relapse prior to finally saying I'm over it for yeah, good. Yeah, uh, too many, too many to mm -hmm. count, you know. Um, I remember the first time I went to a, a detox program when I was first on my, I guess, my journey of sobriety. Uh, 
they told me um, the people that work there they were like you know you're probably not gonna get it on your first time and that felt so discouraging because right. I'm like I shouldn't say that yeah you know what I mean I'm like well I'm here I'm trying to get help we'll see you again yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what was so crazy about that statement it was once I left the day I left I picked up and relapsed the day yeah, you the left the day I left they know you know they know something yeah. uh, and it took a few times I'd go get out a couple of days sober, mess up, go back. Uh, it was about the fourth time I was like, oh, I can't keep doing this. I got to, you know, stick to it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to die, you know. Yeah, no, absolutely. And what about your family? Like, where were they in all of this? Because yeah. you're still really young, by the mm -hmm. way. What are you, 26? 26, yeah, yeah, 26. So when all this was happening, you know, 18 years old, mm -hmm. when you were, so what was happening, like, with your family? What were they saying? Were they? Yeah, there's only so much they can do, you know, at a certain point. Like, they, God bless their, their soul. You know, they uh, they tried as much as they could to, to get me off, you know, substances and put me in programs to do all that. But at the end of the day, it really comes down to you have to want to change yourself. Mm -hmm. And I, I think they had a little bit of hope that one day I would I would see clearly and be like, oh, I, I can't keep living like this. Obviously, they were fearful that I was yeah. going to pass away every every night, you know. They're very good people. All right, little Zan is joining us. He has a new single out right now, So Pretty. He has a new project that's about to drop. We have more with him when we come back. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Now I'm back, 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 now I'm back, get it. You got the Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and little Zan is here in the building. It feels like you're still addicted to women, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. That's, yeah, a little bit. A lot, maybe. You said a little bit, a lot. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I love, I love women. I always have. That's, mm -hmm. that's probably a vice, and it's, its own way you know okay because you have a song that i they actually sent me it's not out yet it used to used to that yes yeah, next so one. does that mean now you finally have found the right woman I, yeah okay yeah you heard yeah you like the lyrics um yeah you know uh, <laughs> i i have i have a girl in my life that mm -hmm. that is real real important we don't like to give like labels to things you uh, know but is that we or you probably more me okay yeah it's definitely Let's more say me. that you yeah, didn't want to get yeah, okay it's, yeah it's, she probably would love to have a label but uh <laughs> I'm just being real, but you know, you. we're young. We're young. She's my age. Uh, she gets it. She's she's been with me for a couple of years. She understands that mm -hmm. that uh, you know it's a it's a lot of temptation and a lot of crazy stuff that happens in this industry. But uh, she's cool. And um, listen, cool enough that you talking about her. So oh yeah 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 yeah. I, I love her. I do love her. Yeah. Oh, you know what I want to ask you since you talked about some funny things that mm. happened online. You were on fake watch busters. That was crazy. You know, oh, I, with two I, fake I, watches. I, I love. I want to explain this story because I'm so glad that you brought this up. <laughs> okay. I don't know if those watches are fake, but those watches weren't mine. I couldn't afford no watch like that. Are you kidding me? So you were standing. No, with no, no. Else's but that's why I got mad at fake watch buster because those watches were from someone who could afford them. Okay. Like I'm talking like a billionaire. I don't want to give out his name, but he created a. A website that you know is um so that's what pissed me off is i was like i don't think this guy would have fake watches is elon musk no it wasn't okay. elon musk but that you know <laughs> but he was a billionaire so that's what pissed me off because i was like it can't be fake i don't know maybe they were i don't know but that's like, if i was a billionaire anything i wore people would think it's not fake yeah so why buy the real so that's thing? why i was tripping when i was like man this ain't even mine and y'all calling the fake <laughs> Like, come on. No. But you ended up getting some fake jewelry. I mean, some, yeah. real, some free jewelry out of that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, uh, he's a good friend. Um, yeah, that, that is hilarious, yeah, by the way. Yeah, that I, you had those watches on. That's what pissed me off so bad. And I was like, bro, these, <laughs> if only you knew that these weren't mine and there were some rich guys, then you'd believe that they were real. That's a good uh, example of something I would never do again. I would never flex <laughs> someone else's watches. Uh, and then get mad about them possibly being fake. That, yeah, I wouldn't do that. But that's my life. There's right. so many little stories like that. Me falling asleep on an airplane on someone. Like, funny stuff that builds, like, I don't know, builds But character. there's some serious things. I mean, look, there was a situation. I remember you also thought you were going to be a father. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really excited. did. Yeah. yeah. And you still, to this day, are not sure, right, about... No, no. See, I, I'm pretty sure I understand what happened with that was mm -hmm. I really... People at the time thought I was in cahoots about it with, with the girl, you know, like we were trying to do this for, like, uh, virality or something to be viral, but uh, she lied to me, too. I really thought I was going to have a kid, but then I told her to go... It was just fishy, you know, because yeah. I started seeing my fans... You know, when the fans start teeing someone's up and then I take notice that I'm like, okay. And then there was just some inconsistencies and then our, our relationship ended kind of after that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, was yeah. it because of that? In a way, not directly, but it didn't help. And then there was the hot Cheeto story. Again, another organic thing that would you would think like, what is that? Like, is that set up? Is that staged? Uh, no, what happened with the hot Cheeto thing is I ate too many hot Cheetos, threw up a little blood, 
went on live, talked about it, and mm -hmm. said, yo, I'm still, I, I was just making a live. I was just like, yo, letting my fans know that uh, I was still going to be on tour, you know, that the Hot Cheetos didn't put me down and out. <laughs> um, and then the next day I'm at the airport and uh, one of my friends shows me his phone and it's Lil Xan overdoses. They use the word overdose. I never said the word overdose, right. but shout out to that blog, whoever it was that used it, because in every major uh, blog picked that up and used the word overdose and it just turned it into like this wild what like overdose on hot cheetos and and then and people started giving me hot cheetos everywhere i'm at and i'm like oh my god kill you. yeah i'm like what's going on <laughs> man like oh man yeah crazy crazy things like that right know? all right well listen i really appreciate you for coming through this Thank is you. our first time mm -hmm. you know having to sit down and i'm looking very much forward to this documentary i know so you have some interesting stories yeah. to tell us congratulations so you said it's an ep yeah, an EP. That's okay. what. Yeah, uh, with that's, no name yet. No, no title name yet. yet. No name yet. It might be no, then maybe you never know. Okay. Yeah. And financially, have things always been good for you, or? Yeah, that you know, that's, I'm glad you brought that up too, because obviously a lot of videos talking about like speculating on, uh, you mm -hmm. know, money and finance. I hate those videos because they don't know anything about me, and it's just all like clickbait. But uh, there was a time, yeah, where I spent damn near almost all my money on drugs. Mm -hmm. But now, oh no, I've I've built back up like a, a pretty, you know. Nice look. Like I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable. You know. All right, good. Yeah, I'm comfortable. Still way up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, we're blessed. <laughs> we're blessed. All right. Well, thank you so much, Diego. Thank you uh, for joining us on Way with Angela Yee, aka Little Zan. Hell yeah. It's anxiety. Let's go. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I appreciate you. It's way up. And when we come back, we have Ask Yee. We have our Jamaican award-winning advice giver Mano here with us, as well as Jasmine from the Jasmine brand. It's way up with Angela Yee. Eight hundred two nine two fifty one fifty. Ask Yee is next. Whether it's relationship or career advice, Angela's dropping facts. So you should, so you should know. This is Ask Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine is here. Yes. Mano is here. Yes, I am. And we want to hear what your questions are. 800-292-5150. Rel, how you doing? I'm feeling good. How you feeling? I'm good, thank you. How's everything going? You got a question? Yeah, I just need some sound advice for real. Okay. Because... I got a girl that I've been dating for a couple of years, but I've been sleeping with her mom and her sister. What? <laughs> You're sleeping with this girl's and, mom and sister? I can't believe that yeah, this happens and, this frequently. Mayno, stop laughing. <laughs> Go ahead. I feel some tight way about it, but I don't want to stop. <laughs> so what is your question? Like, what should I do? Should I tell her or should I, or should I just keep doing what I'm doing? Because like I said, I regret it, but... I still want to do it some more for so, real. So you want to keep doing it, right? But at the same time, yeah. you want to you want to tell her. If you tell I her, then you're not going to be able to keep doing it. And if you tell her, it's going to crush her. Yeah, that's true too. But at the same time, they all nasty for real. The sister, the mom, clearly. And I'm thinking like, and I'm thinking like, if I what if I told them, and like, what, like if they was with it, like right. they have you done the it. sister and the mother together? Oh my gosh, that's disgusting. nah. But I but I, I've been thinking about it. No. Maybe you should try no, that first. No. I mean, this can't be real. No, no, I don't even believe this, real. Yeah, I don't believe you. No, I'm I, no, I'm being I'm being so serious with you. you. Serious, man. I'm being I, serious. Well, first of all, I'm being so serious. You so clearly you're not in love. Mm, I, I lust. Okay, you so doing? you're not in love, man. and you feel you regret what you're doing, but you don't want to stop. Yeah, and and I'm and I'm kind of feeling like I got feelings for her mom more, oh but I'm not really sure. I don't really think about it too much. Mm -mm -mm. Well, this whole thing sounds like a mess. You ain't gonna end up with any of those women. Yeah, and I can't even imagine being involved with a family member whose whole family is like that. Everybody has to be something going on in their um, yeah. <laughs> mental. Right? You know now. what I think? The sister I don't. The sister what? The sister don't care at all. Like I'll really? be asking her, like, do you? Like, do you even care about what you're doing to your sister? No, she don't care at all. And neither do you if you're doing it. The nerve. Wait, somebody said the nerve. Nah, I, I care about myself. No, we know that. But we you know don't you care, care about your girlfriend. <laughs> we know you care about yourself. You don't care about your girlfriend at all for you to be doing these things. And then Whoa. her sister's talking crazy. You're doing the mom. So you don't care about your girlfriend. So why are you in a relationship? You think I should leave her? Yeah. For like the mom don't yeah, leave until you, until you got it all, oh put gosh. it all together. Put I don't, them all together. I don't think that you should tell, but I think you should just end the relationship. And and in the future, if we decide to get back together, then then oh that's God. what I should do. I don't think you want to be How with her. How old are you? I'm 28. You from Philly, right? 
<laughs> no, I'm from Wilmington, Delaware. Oh my okay. gosh. Stop. <laughs> Maino, stop yourself. it. <laughs> this is not a... This is not Dude, a, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I don't think you want to be... Act. I don't think you want to be in a relationship. That's okay. my that's But even my if he family. get out the relationship, he's still going to be sleeping with the mom and the sister. He, he, At he, least he's he not in a relationship. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna stop sleeping with the sister and the mom. I don't even plan on it. I just feel bad when I'm doing it. Well, I don't feel bad when I'm doing it. I feel bad after. Mm. All right. Well, yeah. Listen, don't be in a relationship if you're going to be doing things like this, and understand that this could tear a whole family apart. But if mm-hmm. you're okay with that, I just don't understand. Oh, why, it could bring the family together. I don't understand why you do something that you feel bad while you're doing it. No, I don't feel bad while I'm doing it. I feel bad after. Feel bad. Mm-hmm. So is that how you want to feel? He's a remorseful. F- I don't want no. I don't want to feel like this. It's just like I can't stop. The mom is more advanced. The mom, the mom know what she's doing, and the little sister is like she she more natural than her. She just oh look, but my, the, the, my girl just look better. What Listen, the only mean? way to reach legendary status is to get them all together. No, no, no. 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 I, 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 I feel like I could get them three and call you, Mayno, for real, for real. <laughs> hey, listen, Mayno. Man. No. Oh, my gosh. No. Yeah, do that, guys. Why don't y'all exchange numbers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, he can, yeah, Mayno, go ahead and hit my grill relic. It's R-E-L-L-I-I-K-I-S. What, what is that? No. That's your girl? R-E-L-L-I-K-I-I-S-S. All Got right, it. thank you, Relly. Really. All right, good luck. <laughs> and y'all make sure and make sure y'all check out my movie on YouTube called The Come Up. Okay, yeah. got you. Can't wait. <laughs> All right, see y'all. Bye. <laughs> All right, well that was Ashley. I don't believe that. Ugh, that's disgusting. I'm sorry. But anyway, um, you don't believe that man's story? You, no. But when we come back, you guys have the last word. Eight hundred two nine two fifty one fifty. It's way up with Angela Yee. Pick up the phone. Tap in. Tap in and get your voice heard. What the word is. Here's the last word on Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine Brand is here. Yes. Mano is here. Yes, I am. Who Mano? I don't know if we'll ever see the all of us together again. Trio. Oh, stop it, Angela. <laughs> yes. <laughs> stop it. Real scarce. No, Mano's about to get on a flight. Okay. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I'm sure we'll see some of his escapades. Yeah. Are you going to FaceTime us when you're away? Of course I will. Okay, okay good. I can't live without you guys. You know, Mano's getting on a flight. He has a hat today with a plane on it, taking yeah, off. Yeah, <laughs> <out. laughs> You know what? He's going to put, I don't catch feelings, I catch flights in his yeah. bio on Twitter, yeah. on X. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. But anyway, thank you to little Zan for joining us today. That was a great conversation yeah. that we had the opportunity to have with him just because now he has uh, kicked his drug habit. He's been clean. Nice. You know, he actually went to Scott Storch's rehab, so you can listen wow. to the full interview on mm-hmm. Way Up With Ye on YouTube. You can okay. watch it there. Um, also, thank you to everybody who called in today. We talked about our edible issues. We did, yeah. Mano's had several. <laughs> several. And it's not over. He it's does not never learn been his done. lesson. He goes back No, I'm in. done. You done? Are I'm you? done. I've been done for quite some time. I was going to bring some in. No, no, no. I don't want no parts of it. <laughs> Jasmine, you never had a bet. You didn't tell us yours. Oh, I just started crying and I felt like I was going to poop on myself. That's like a regular day. Did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't. Yeah, I, did. First of all, I just wouldn't say it if I did. No, I wouldn't tell the story did, at all. But no, I, I started crying. It was too much. Are you guys down to do ayahuasca one day with a shaman? I'm scared that I'm gonna cry again. Do y'all <laughs> got do you do uh, try mushrooms? Yeah, I love mushrooms. Yeah. Okay, you love mushrooms. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, like I won't mushrooms. say I love them, but I do. I enjoy it. Cool. Yeah, but yeah. anyway, guys, it's enough of that. You know, shout out to little Zan. No, <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with us? <laughs> All right. And again, um, we'll yeah, be back right. tomorrow on a Friday. That's my favorite day yep. of the week. Mm-hmm. But you guys always have the last word: eight hundred two nine two fifty one fifty. Let's go. I want to shine some light on my sister, make a calm in Minnesota. She's a great mom, a great person. I'm really proud of her from doing what she's doing right now. She just adopted literally four children that's not hers, trying to help the family. they all brothers and sisters, three girls and a little baby boy. She's doing really good, and she's a great person from for even doing that, sticking her neck out to sit up there and help a family and keep them together is such a beautiful thing, and I just want to give all praise to her and shine the light on her today. Your sis, okay. Hey, Angela Yee, this is Lisa. I'm calling about the edible incident. I had a crazy incident my first time with edibles, too. Uh, I was told to eat a half of one. I ate half. It didn't do anything, so I ate the other half. Then it seemed like that wasn't doing anything after an hour. Uh, so I think I ate another one. But long story short, I fell asleep. I, I remember laughing, going to sleep. Then I woke up the next morning on the couch, and I was fine as long as I was laying down. As soon as I went to sit up, oh, my God, my head started spinning. 
and then I had to crawl to the bathroom. I was hugging the toilet bowl. I was in tears. I was crying. I couldn't even lift my head up. I had to climb up to the sink to try to put water on my face to try to make myself come back. And I kept saying, oh, God, please don't let me die. Please don't let me die. I want to shine a light out on my son, L. Sean Taylor. He going into his freshman year at Bemidji State University in Minnesota. He graduated high school with a 3.5 average. He went to Bemidji State to play football. He a three-sport athlete. He wrestled, track and field, and football. He worked a job, and he's outstanding. Angela Yee uh, uh, is way up. On the way up.